what's new in the wonderful world of antifungals? What are you saying? There's a fungus among us? Find out today on Medical History Mysteries. Hey everyone, welcome to Medical History Mysteries. I'm Pam Maragliano Muniz. With me, as always, Tom Viola. Tom, we're going to talk today about antifungals. I think we all, as dental professionals, get a little when a patient opens their mouth, sticks out their tongue, and it's covered in white cottage cheese looking fungus. Yes. So, what do you do in this situation? You know, it, it some sometimes it's it seems so obvious. The treatment seems obvious because it's staring you in the face, right? Well, the one good thing about having oral candidiasis, if there's anything good about it, is you've got direct access, right? You can you can attack the fungus directly versus having some type of other fungal infection systemically, which is never a good thing. You've got it right here. So let's take care of it. But the agents that we use in the treatment of candidiasis and uh, also fungal pharyngitis which is much uh, less often uh, diagnosed, uh, haven't changed for years. You know, we're still using Nystatin as our first line agent. Now, uh, if you've ever tried Nystatin, if you've ever put it in your mouth, the first thing you do when you put Nystatin in your mouth is what? It's awful. It, it tastes awful. But you soldier on, right? Because you put the Nystatin oral suspension in your mouth, you swish. And while you're swishing, the, the, the pieces of the fungus start falling off the tissue because it's breaking their gastrol bonds that hold the patches of fungus to your mucosa. So it kind of slides off. And now you're swishing, not just the nystatin, but you're swishing the clumps. And so it's getting a little, you know, like, and then the instructions say, don't forget to swallow. Swallow? Okay. nobody's going to swallow, okay? So most of the time we spit it out. And the unfortunate part about Nystatin, it's a good drug, don't get me wrong. It's just that it tastes so awful. It's loaded with dextrose. So it's it's sickeningly sweet and awful at the same time. And all that does is make you produce so much saliva that you dilute the Nystatin and then you lose the contact time with the fungus. See, this is a topical antifungal. The way to kill the fungus is to have the antifungal in contact with your fungus. You need up close and personal time with your fungus. And you, you don't get it because you're producing all the saliva. And then you have a mouthful of saliva, nasty tasting nice, that and clumps of fungus. Ah, so... And you're not going to swallow. Nobody does. And that's the problem because there's colonies of candida back here. And that's where fungal pharyngitis becomes an issue. And there's only a few people on this planet that can really see it. You know, you got respiratory folks who can see it, right? You got, you know, ENT folks who can see it and dental folks. Why? Because you got the light, you got the mirror and the patient's in a supine position and you can see it. That cherry red mucosa, those little white spots back there. Ah, a reservoir of candida that if not treated will only recolonize the mouth over and over again. So you treat the oral candidiasis, you never treat the fungal pharyngitis, and that's how you get recurrent thrush. So you got to swallow. Okay, so how do I do it? If you're going to prescribe nice that, it's two doses. First dose, in, swish, spit. And then second dose, in, don't swish. Just get it in there gargle, and swallow. Okay, so one of the shortfalls of Nystatin is that it's topical. The other shortfall of Nystatin is it's topical. What does that mean? It means once you swallow it, it doesn't work anymore. It doesn't have any systemic effect. It's not absorbed into the bloodstream like another drug. So the only chance you get to use Nystatin is when it's in here. After that, it's inactive. So the longer the contact time, probably the better off you are. Absolutely. And this is why sometimes the dentists in my area here in New Jersey uh, prescribe the Nystatin vaginal suppositories to be used orally. 
People say, why would they do that? Well, because they're made of cocoa butter and they're a suppository and it's easier to hold it in your mouth longer without all the dextrose so you don't make all that saliva and you get contact time because the suppository is directly in contact with your tongue. Makes sense, except whenever they do that for male patients, it confuses the heck out of them and I've got to explain, you know, yeah, I know, it's for this, not any other part of your body. But otherwise, it, it does work, but some docs say, man, that's a lot of work. Why don't I just prescribe diflucan? Why not? So diflucan or fluconazole is an azole antifungal systemically, right? You, you swallow it, right? If you've ever used diflucan for some type of candidiasis, you know, vaginal candidiasis, if you know this drug, usually what? One dose, done, Okay. I mean, we use it sometimes more than one dose, depending on how severe the candidiasis is and if we're trying to treat fungal pharyngitis. The problem is, while these drugs are very powerful, with great power comes great responsibility. Ben Parker, right? What does that mean? It means, okay, you're using a very powerful antifungal. Now, be careful, because if you were to ask me, Tom, give me the name of one prescription drug that we use in dentistry that causes drug interactions, the most drug interactions, I would say it's diflucan. So unless you've got that drug interaction checker on your phone or on your computer where you can check, realize you're asking for it with diflucan. And even in a few doses, diflucan has sometimes been implicated in potential liver disease. So good drugs. Don't get me wrong. And, and some people say, no, no, no I'm not going to use diflucan. I'll use Mycelex. Okay. Mycelex, clotrimazole, another azole, antifungal is used topically on the tongue and when you swallow it it does work oh well, that seems to be a happy medium between the nice statin and the diaphragm right okay the only problem with my selects the trochees as they're known is that they're about the size of a quarter you have to put it on your tongue you have to hold it there for about 20 minutes you have to do it five times a day Okay, that's so about, let's say that's roughly two hours of your day, you're holding this disc on your tongue. You're not allowed to chew it. You have to let it slowly dissolve. And if you got to eat, speak, do something else in that 20 minutes, it gets to be too cumbersome. So while it may be the great, you know, middle of the road drug, the, the way it's used becomes such an obstacle that patients don't use it anyway. And then moves the point. When we're treating them for candidiasis, change your toothbrush. And we also have to treat any dental appliances that they wear. So retainers, night guards, CPAPs, sleep devices, anything that they're wearing in their mouth has to additionally be treated. And we have to modify our prescription accordingly. Couldn't have said it better. That's so important, especially CPAP machines. If you're not cleaning your CPAP machine every day, like you were instructed, you're just asking for oral and respiratory infections. Look, I know it's not diff it's not easy. It's very, very difficult to do this every day and be so disciplined about it. But you're asking for trouble. And the same thing with the toothbrush. Throw it away. And for whatever I can ask, please don't ever share a toothbrush with anybody, okay? Stick to your own. They're not that expensive, right? Get your own toothbrush. Uh, and use your own if you have appliances, as you said, you know, make sure that uh, that you're cleaning them properly, because I can tell you this much, if they're working in uh, long term care facilities, I would see uh, folks who wear full dentures and they would just take the denture out and you could see the, the candida. It was it was right there in front of you. And, and, you know, fungus grows in dark, moist, warm places. Well, under a denture is a great place for fungus to grow. So. Uh, sometimes they would actually soak their denture in nystatin suspension. I don't recommend that because I don't know about staining and so on or, or compromising the, the denture. But I do think that uh, we've got to be scrupulous uh, when we see uh, the first signs of candidiasis to, to treat it aggressively because it can, it can last, it can linger for months and sometimes in some cases even over a year. Wow. So treat it right away, treat all of the appliances, change your toothbrush and follow up. No question. All right, everybody. I hope you feel better about treating oral care and candidiasis. And we will see you all at Medical History Mysteries next week. Thank you, everybody.
Thank you.